Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about hue, saturation, and value, or HSV. It's another way to represent color other than RGB. We're going to talk about how to switch between the two color representations, why you would want to, and how to get that all set up and working in Shader Graph. I'm Game Dev Bill. Let's get started. Now, this is one of my more math intensive videos, and I'm actually going to keep it really high level to avoid getting into the weeds too much. You see, Converting from HSV to RGB and back is fairly intensive. It's a pretty complicated thing to do mathematically. Unfortunately, ShaderGraph hasn't provided us with nodes to do it. I've made some, I've put them up on GitHub, so in the description below you can find links to that. I will cover the math a little bit here today just so you have the general idea of what's going on, but if you just want the nodes, you can get them on GitHub. If you really want to dig into the math, I've got a written version of this tutorial that goes into a little more detail. When you're in ShaderGraph, Colors are always represented with RGB, or red, green, and blue. Those channels are used to figure out what the actual color is. You can represent all the colors of the rainbow through those three channels. Most of the time, that's great. Sometimes you need to do math in such a way that it'd really help to have a different kind of representation for your color. And in fact, conceptually, HSV matches the way we perceive the world a lot more than RGB does. Generally, if you just look at something with your eyes, you're thinking about the hue. In fact, if we open up Unity's color picker, you actually interact with it in an HSV mindset. There's a circle of colors around the picker, and this is the rainbow representing hue. So that circle is just setting the hue value. And then once you set the hue inside, there's a square where left to right controls the saturation, where fully saturated is the color at its brightest, and not at all saturated is white. And then up and down represents value where at the very top, the thing is its brightest, and at the very bottom, it's black or it's darkest. Even though you're interacting with this color picker in Shader Graph using HSV, the output is still gonna be RGB, and that's what you're gonna be interacting with. But sometimes you wanna do things like shift the hue, adjust the saturation or brightness, something you wanna do that's easier to do in HSV space than not, and I'm gonna show you how to work with that. First, I'm going to give a brief description of the inefficient way to convert between the color spaces, just to make sure you understand the concepts of, of what's going on between these two spaces. Conceptually, you figure out your max and your min from RGB. Of the three channels, R, G, and B, which one's biggest and which one's smallest, and what are those values? So the biggest one is your V, or your value. This conceptually makes sense in that um, if all your RGB values were really, really small, then you're going to be pretty close to black. If they're at least one of them is high, you're going to be some bright color, whether that's an actual color or white. The saturation is taking the biggest and the smallest and dividing by the biggest. And what that essentially is calculating is, what's our color range here? If all RGB and are roughly the same value, you're going to be a gray. If they're really separated, then you're going to be having something that's very saturated. And then the hue calculation is based on knowing which of the three is the max, and then doing just a little bit of simple math to understand the difference between the other two. This implementation that matches how things actually work is unfortunately fairly inefficient for shaders. There's if checks, there's the math just isn't set up right. A while ago, somebody put a blog post online that actually shows the most efficient way to do it in a shader, and that's been the standard for years. I've gone ahead and converted that to shader graph and set up some subgraph nodes for you. They're on GitHub. Taking a quick look at them now, I do have them set up to match the online implementation. So if you look at the code, there's you know a K, a P, a Q. Then if we look at the actual shader graph, I've created groups to match all of those. All in all, at the end of the day, you've got an input that's a color that's RGB space and your output is HSV. This RGB to HSV node is much more complicated. If we look at the HSV to RGB, it's a bit simpler. Again, if you want to really understand this math or dig into it, there's a bit more on my website, but it's really just one of those things where it kind of works. With a high level out of the way, we can dive into an example. The first sample I want to do involves this dragon of mine. I want to take this dragon and hue shift it, which is pretty straightforward, but I want to do it only on the red parts, not on the spikes. I want to leave the spikes the color that they currently are. I'm starting here with a shader graph that samples the four textures needed for this dragon. It's albedo and then a bunch of others we don't care about. Albedo is all we're going to worry about today. And that's actually why I put a preview node in there, just so I have an easier way to wire it up. Since I want to do a hue shift, we can start with Unity's hue shift node just to see what it would look like. If I add that node and wire up the color from my sampler 
and a shift input that I've already added to this shader, we can see what that looks like. Actually, I've wired it up wrong. The hue shift node supports degrees or a normalized, and I want it to be normalized 0 to 1, so let me fix that. Now we can see what it looks like hue shifting it. And as you can see, everything changes color, including the spikes. So let's try to do this hue shift, but leaving the spikes alone. In the shader graph, I'm going to feed my color into RGB to HSV. This is the subgraph node I've made that's up on GitHub. I immediately feed that into a split and then a combine because I need to mess with the individual channels. And then I take the output of the combine and I feed that into my HSV to RGB node. At this point, I have a graph that doesn't do anything, but it gets us into HSV space and back, and that way I can work with these colors. To make this conditional on just a small range of hue, what I need is I need a collection of nodes where I feed in something that's of the range 0 to 1, which is what the hue is, and the output is 0 most of the time, but 1 for some small section. And a good way, this is a little shader graph tip I'm going to show you, a good way to figure out this kind of thing, to work through this kind of math, is to actually do it on a UV node. So just to test my math and get it going, I'm going to create a UV node, add a split to it, and feed the output of that split into a preview. This shows me that across the X, I'm getting from 0 to 1. Now I can test out my math and figure out how things are going to work. So I'm going to feed the output of that into a smooth step. And what I want it to do is be 0 before I get to my range, ramp from 0 to 1 during my range, and then be 1 after it. So to be able to define my range and make it fluid, I'm going to set up a vector1 value, feed that into an add node to add the size of my range. So the vector1 represents the start of my range, the add represents the size of the range, and then feed those into the two edges of the smooth step. As you can see, if I set this to something like 0.5, I clearly get black most of the time. Then at 0.5, it ramps up for the width, and then it's white after that. Now I feed this into two step nodes one with a cutoff range of 1 and one with a cutoff range of 0 0.01. What this does is it makes it so that the output of each of those is either 0 or 1, but where they switch is different. Feeding those into a subtract, I get just that difference, and you can see I can move the value of my vector around to see where that difference is. With the math set up, I can clear out the little dummy nodes that I had earlier and feed my hue into this. I'll then feed the output of this into a 1 minus and a multiply and then the original into a multiply. And this is a standard formula where you're taking a value that's 0 or 1, feeding one version of it into a multiply and the inverse of it into a multiply. And this makes it so that I can have wherever the narrow band of white is, that's what I'm going to keep the same color. And where it was black, I'm going to make hue shift it. In this logic I have here, the top leg, the one feeding off of the 1 minus, that's going to take the hue shift. And the bottom leg, which isn't feeding off of the 1 minus, that's going to take my original hue and leave it unaltered. Jumping back into the editor, you can see that now I can do a hue shift, I can change the color of my dragon, and the spikes stay the same, which is exactly what I was going for. This is a good way to get variety in your art by making some of your objects be different colors, partially, but the same color otherwise. It keeps, helps to tie them together and give you some consistency while also having variety in your game. For those of you that have watched more than one of my videos, you might have noticed that I did something very similar in my first tutorial in my introduction to Shader Graph. In that, I took R, G, and B, added the R and G together, subtracted the B to find which parts of the screen were yellow. And you may be asking yourself, isn't that an easier way to deal with color than this thing I'm doing with the dragon? It was for yellow and for that piece of art. You see, the math I did to figure out which parts were yellow was very specific to yellow. I couldn't easily change that shader graph to look for a different color, and there's really only a few colors where I could do that kind of math at all, even if I wanted to set it up manually. In addition, it worked particularly well on that piece of art because that piece of art didn't have a lot of gradients or shades to it. Just to show what it would look like, I did do a quick conversion where I took my original shader graph from that tutorial I switched it from using some add and subtracts to find out what's yellow to using the HSV space. So I do the same conversion I was just doing, RGB to HSV. In this case, I can actually grab the value as my black and white version of my screen that I'm going to color tint. Coming over to the editor, you can see that my initial values were actually a little bit off. 
Because this is using just the hue and not something very color specific, I can adjust my slider to what hue I'm looking for, and I can fix the flames. Similarly, if I wanted to, for some reason, instead of highlighting the flames, highlight the red bricks, I could change my hue to the red area, and that would work as well. The next example I'm gonna show is actually messing with the HSV values. I'm setting up a full screen shader. It's gonna take in the screen in main text. Here I convert it to RGB, again, split and combine right away, and then into an HSV. I, this time I'm taking the saturation, feeding it into a multiply, and multiplying it by my saturation input. I've set this up to be a slider in the material from zero to 10. You can see if I slide it all the way down to zero, I get a black and white scene. At one, I get my normal scene, and then as I slide it up, I get the colors really blasted out. This can be useful if you want something a little more cartoony, a little overdone, or if it's done subtly, it can just help to make your scenes feel a little more vibrant at times. You can you really play with saturation to affect the mood and feel of your game. Back in the shader graph, I'm now gonna do something similar to value. Only with value, you don't wanna just boost it or take it away. What you actually generally wanna do is affect the shape of it. So normally value is in the range of zero to one and it's just a linear line. If I feed that into a smooth step, I end up with a more of a curve to it. And this makes the darks darker and the brights brighter and keeps the mids kind of the same. This is effectively adjusting the contrast. So I take a smooth step, I feed it into a lerp, and I have that lerp be my control input. This is particularly noticeable in black and white. If I So if I take the saturation back down to zero, you can see when I crank my contrasty input from zero to one, it's switching from the normal look to something much more sharp and crisp. You can do it with the color version as well. It still shows up, it's still a noticeable effect. That wraps up my sample. Obviously there's a lot more we could do with HSV, other samples we could do, but it's really just a kind of foundational piece, a foundational node, and I wanted to make sure to go over it, make sure you knew how to get it, so again, Look in the description for the GitHub link. Head over to gamedevbuild.com for more tutorials. Please subscribe, and thank you all so much for watching.